This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Everybody. How are you? Good to see you. How are you? Uh, I decided tonight that uh, I normally I just run an interview at this point, but I have nothing to run except another repeat of, uh, of uh, say, a, a Steve Kravitz interview or maybe the old Penn Jillette interview or a whole bunch of other things. Yeah, I just decided, what the hell? Usually I used to talk for a half hour, and I just don't know if I can do that anymore. But I'll talk for a little bit at the beginning of the show tonight. And we will uh, be able to uh, try and entertain you with some of our, our ideas and thoughts and things on what's going on. Uh, I, uh, I am, like, uh, really kind of uh, bothered by a couple of news items uh, that are bothering <laughs> bothered by a couple of items that are bothering me. See, I can't do this anymore. I can't talk forever about one subject for a long period of time. Let me see here. Do I have all the stuff I want? Yeah. Uh, look at this guy. Hmm? Uh, you might not know that face. Uh, that is Jeff Zucker. Uh, Zach Zucker um, uh, is the, uh, was the head of CNN. He had been previous to that. He had been over at NBC. Uh, as the head of programming there, and he has been a very successful person in his career, and he's been he's been pretty successful the companies that he's uh, that he's involved himself in, and in the case of CNN, uh, yeah, they've done well and they've done bad, uh, but basically uh, he he did a good job of, of of writing the ship. If I look off to the side and everything, because I'm also running all of this, all the pictures you see and all of that, so. Please don't mind that. I get distracted. Anyway, he uh, he 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 uh, was in charge of CNN, and he, granted, CNN hasn't done as well as they should. But he got he quit uh, two days ago. He announced his uh, re resignation from CNN, not because he's mad at CNN or anything, but because he did not he did not disclose something. You see, he had uh, he had had this woman who worked with him for, God, uh, uh, twenty years, on and off at NBC, and then later on at CNN. And her name was uh, Allison Golust. I like this Golust. Uh, Allison Golust. And she was the vice president, and chief marketing officer for CNN, and prior to that, had held similar jobs at NBC. Now, mind you, he had uh, not favored her in any of these things except that she was really good at what she did. And over the years, they had become acquaintances and they become friends. And uh, so uh, they, uh, they never had anything going on between them except a great business relationship, okay? And this went on for about 18 years. And at a certain point, she found herself divorced, and he found himself divorced. And uh, during COVID, I guess they kind of looked at each other and said, "You know, this has been a pretty good. This has been the best relationship we've had in a long time. Uh, maybe we should take it further." Now, sometimes that's a bad idea. Sometimes that's a good idea. In this particular case, it looks like it was a good idea. They really loved each other and cared about each other, and. Um, uh, but th what happened was, in the light of the Chris Cuomo situation, where he uh, helped his brother forge his excuses for what he did and so on, and was kind of his media uh, uh, consultant, uh, they didn't like Chris Cuomo doing that, so they fired him. All right, And in the midst of all of that, they interviewed 
they've had to interview um, uh, Jeff Zucker about all of this because he, among other people, are getting sued by Chris Cuomo. So they asked him, you know, have you had any relationships here at uh, CNN? And he said, yes, I have had a, a relationship that's been going on for, I think he said, the past two years, ever since the start of COVID. And uh, he, with this uh, uh, Golist woman, uh, what's her name? And her first name again is uh, G Georgia, Georgia, what is it? Allison, Allison Golist. And um, he said, yeah, I've had this relationship going with her. Well, he didn't reveal that. And uh, according to CNN rules and regulations, if you're having a relationship with somebody you work with at CNN, you should report it so that they know it. But he didn't do that. Okay, big whoop. Okay, you know, I don't think that that's a reason to get rid of him or to ask him to leave or whatever. But they didn't ask him to leave. He just said, okay, look, I quit. He was planning on leaving in 2022 anyway. It was just a question of when. They're getting ready to launch this thing called CNN Plus, and it's his baby. And without him there now, there's nobody to guide the ship or to continue what was the, the feeling of the, uh, the uh, uh, idea of what this particular uh, site should be. Uh, and uh, but he left before that, and now it's kind of like you know, uh, the company's floundering. Now, mind you, let me also add to all of this that he's not one of these guys that everybody hated. In fact, he was one of these guys that everybody liked. In fact, people like Don Lemon and uh, I don't know several other people over at CNN have come to his defense, saying this is a great guy. We've really enjoyed working with him. He's been a, a, a great for talent, and we uh, we've enjoyed. Uh, having him here and he's a nice guy okay so nobody hates him either nobody's throwing him to the wolves okay so it's indicated that he should leave otherwise they're gonna let him go all right so he takes the choice of leaving because if it's now or in July when maybe he was planning on leaving I'll just do it a couple of months early uh, and so he leaves Meanwhile, now here's, here's the part that I find sexist on the part of CNN. They didn't ask Alison Golas to quit. They didn't ask her to leave, they asked him to leave. Uh, and there's something kind of wrong about that. You know, not that I want to see her fired either. I think it's just a ridiculous thing all the way around. So he didn't let you know that he was having a relationship. And so that might, that might put you in hot water later on down the line if there's some complaints or all of a sudden the relationship falls apart and then she decides to sue CNN, you know, and so on. So, anyway, be that as it may, okay? Um, uh, he's, uh, uh, you know, he is out and she is still in. You know? And I don't think he should have been, he should have been even asked to leave. I think he was a very valuable asset to CNN and uh, shouldn't have been asked to leave. But that's the way it goes, you know, out the door. Now another person who got into trouble this week, uh, and I'm sure you've heard a lot about this, is Whoopi Goldberg. Now why did Whoopi Goldberg get in trouble? Well, Whoopi Goldberg got in trouble because she said, I'm trying to get the quote here, let's see here. Um, she basically said on The View uh, that uh, the Holocaust wasn't a racial situation, it wasn't racial in nature, that it was uh, a man's inhumanity to man, uh, which is, uh, you know, I think, I don't know that that's necessarily a bad thing that she said. I mean, yeah, she said it wasn't a race thing. Okay. Well, yeah, you could argue that Hitler referred to his group as the master race and referred to the Jews as the, uh, 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 as the uh, 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 what, what did he call them? Something race. Uh, but anyway, uh, she, she probably, to her, that seemed right because she's black. And to her, when something is about race, it's about the color of your skin. And in this case, these were a lot of white people, although not all Jews are white. There are things like uh, 
uh, very black uh, Jews in certain parts of the world. Uh, and um, anyway, uh, she said that, you know, that it wasn't a race thing, that it was really more a case of man's inhumanity to man. <laughs> And then she, the next day after, everybody went crazy over this. I mean, they went overly crazy. And this is a woman, who, by the way, I can say personally, from personal experience, a very nice person, very nice lady. Uh, and uh, the last time I saw her was years ago at Bob Goldthwaite's wedding. Uh, Bobcat, if you know him to be. And uh, she was just a really, I always liked her. She was just a really sweet, decent woman. You know, and I, I I remember saying to her, gee, I hope you'll come on my show again. And she says, well, will you still have me when I don't have a career anymore? And I said, absolutely. So that was that, okay? And that's the last time I saw her. But in the times that I had any kind of dealings with her, she was a nice person. She was just a nice person. And, and supposedly she's done a lot of things for Jewish organizations and so on. You know, she's not an anti-Semite, all right? And this wasn't an anti-Semitic thing. So anyway, ABC decides they're going to put her on two weeks leave. I don't know if it's with or without pay, but two weeks leave. And she's supposed to, in those two weeks, think about what she said and what she did. And she's already said, I know what I said, I know what I did, I'm, I apologize for it, it probably was a wrong way of me putting something, and uh, I should have thought before I spoke, right? But remember again, she's on a talk show, okay? She's on a talk show where she's expected to have an opinion, and not just any opinion, a harsh left-wing opinion, okay? So all of a sudden, you're doing exactly what you're what your um, uh, paymasters have told you to do, and now you're in trouble. And that's what I've always hated about the talk business. I always said, you know, you have me go on the air every day and be Alex Bennett, and Alex Bennett is this uh, kind of brash, absurd human being uh, who uh, 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 sometimes is a little pesky because he says things that people don't exactly like, and, you know, and then when I do it and just go a little too far by accident, you go and fire me. Now, I never got fired for anything that I said on the air because I always kind of was able to go over to the ledge and look over it, but never jump, okay? But I don't know if I would survive today. I really don't know if I would survive today in, in this pit politically, I won't call it politically correct because there's nothing correct about it in this McCarthy-esque time we live in where you are held to account for something you said 20 years ago, you know? And I mean, there were times that I guess on my radio show in San Francisco, we were sexist. But we weren't sexist by the modality of the time, by the, by the zeitgeist, as they call it. Um, uh, you know, so I, I it just wasn't, um, you know, so I don't know that I wouldn't get in the same kind of trouble. But she was on a talk show. She was expected to state her opinion. She stated her opinion. Perhaps she didn't put it right. Uh, she probably should have said, you know, I don't know if I consider it racist because I know that what happens in America is racist because it's against people of very definite complexion. But it certainly was man's inhumanity to man. So, you know, she felt she had to apologize. And I said, oh, she should have apologized. She said, I was wrong in saying the Jews were in a race. Uh, but it wasn't man's inhumanity to man. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. And they make her go away for two weeks to ponder what she did and to so do soul searching. But she's already done the soul searching. She's gone on and apologized. What more do you need? But anyway, she gets two weeks vacation. What the hell, you know? We're going to send you to your room without dinner. That's really what it amounts to. ABC, you're being foolish and you're being childish. Uh, and um, uh, it, 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 this person writes here that I have another thought. This was uh, from, uh, who wrote this? What, uh, what was this on? I think this was in, uh, uh, no, I guess not. Hmm. 
Anyway, it says here, I have another thought in the wake of Whoopi Goldberg's suspension from ABC's The View. Goldberg said that the Holocaust was not about race. Goldberg apologized and then was suspended for two weeks. Now, let me be clear. Now, this isn't a defense of Goldberg or her comments, but are the, we surprised that these panel shows produce so much controversy? Shows such as The View, The Talk, and ESPN Sports Debate shows, and uh, uh, really any panel show, are meant to be entertaining and informative in their edginess and willingness to tackle controversial topics. These shows can't just be about cooking recipes, the weather, or who the starting quarterback should be. Within the topics, do turn serious panelists and guests are encouraged to be provocative. There's exactly what I said. Otherwise, what's the point if everyone's going to be figuratively hold hands and sing songs of peace and love? And if you're going to be provocative, you're eventually going to say something dumb, insulting, insensitive, or just flat out wrong. That's, I agree with that completely. I can't remember. I can't see who wrote that. I got that from somewhere, and then I made a, uh, uh, I printed it out, and then I'm sitting here going, what the hell's that all about? Anyway, um, so anyway, uh, that's uh, that's what's happening with uh, with Whoopi and her situation. Now, where am I? Oh yeah, I want to do this. This one really got to me. Okay. Uh, uh, by the way, um, <laughs> I got to tell you, this is one item I saw, and I want to read it to you just because it, it doesn't make sense to me. Okay. Uh, it says the spinoff. Uh, Big, Big Brother Celebrity Edition finally returned to CBS after three years. Aren't you happy? Does that make you feel good? The spin-off series of long-running competition series made a splash with its premiere topping demo ratings on Wednesday night per Fast Affiliates. Uh, the CBS nabbed a whatever, whatever rating. Well, the house guests are. Now, get this. This was the part that got me when I read this article. So I was just reading to see what ratings were. And, and what the ratings are. But then I looked at this and it says, the house guests for this season are, now I'm going to name these people. Now tell me, I don't know who these people are because I'm just too old to know, okay? And that I, I just don't have any idea who they are. Some of them, most of them. Cynthia Bailey Hill. Now this is celebrity Big Brother. This isn't like schlub Big Brother. This is... The Big Brother thing with uh, you know people that are well known. Cynthia Bailey Hill, I never heard of her. Teddy Mellencamp, any relation to John Cougar Mellencamp? I mean, that's the only Mellencamp I know of. Todd Bridges, I know who Todd Bridges is. Um, Todrick Hall, hmm, never heard of him. Chris Catan, yeah, he was on Saturday Night Live and then has done nothing since. Carson Kressley, what is he? He's like a, does he do fashion or something like that? But I know who he is. I've heard the name. Shauna Molker. Who the hell is, if, any, if anybody knows who these people are, please call me up on the program tonight. Just go to gabnet.net uh, and uh, over on the right-hand side of the page, it has a Zoom link. Just click on that, and it'll zoom you right into us, okay? Uh, because I don't know who some of these people are. Uh, let's see here. Marai Nagasu. I almost had to stop to figure out how to pronounce that name. Lamar Odom, I know who he is, okay? Uh, was not was he, was he the guy, was he in Hamilton? I'm trying to remember. Misha Tate. And Chris Patrick, Kirkpatrick, Chris Kirkpatrick, never heard of any of these people. And this is, of course, Celebrity Big Brother. Okay. Oh, hey, I have one other thing I wanted to mention to you about the bad part about uh, about uh, uh, Jeff uh, uh, Jeff Jeff uh, uh, Zucker. Uh, he is the guy who, when he was at NBC, spearheaded and put up uh, Donald Trump as the host of The Apprentice. 
and really kind of made him the star that he needed to be in order to become president of the United States. I mean, it had a lot to do with him becoming president of the United States. So that was the down part for Zucker. I forgot to mention that, and I wanted to mention that. Um, okay, we go to the Spotify situation with, uh, with uh, um, uh, this is from Podcast Business Journal, uh, about uh, the situation uh, with Joe Rogan. You know, Joe Rogan had people on his show talking about COVID and not giving really good information. Well, it says, who knew signing the most successful podcaster in the world would become such a headache? In addition to reporting quarterly earnings yesterday, Spotify CEO Daniel Ek had, the, had to field questions about the growing discontent from the creators, uh, content creators over the Rogan show. X told investors he's trying to balance expression, uh, creative expression with the safety of our users, of course. This is a very complicated issue, but I'm really proud of the steps we took following concerns raised by the medical and scientific communities. Yeah, they run a little announcement before the Rogan show saying, oh, the information on the show may be full of shit. They don't exactly put it that way. A handful of artists pulled their music from Spotify. We got, uh, let's see here, Neil Young, uh, uh, David Crosby today came across and said he's getting off of there, but he's always had a problem with. It. He says they don't, the artists don't make any real money at Spotify. He said to the uh, person interviewing him on on MSNBC, uh, he said, uh, if I could take all the money I made last year from Spotify, he said I could buy you a cup of coffee. That's how little we make. But uh, he, he said he's not, and Joni Mitchell isn't going to, and um, Prince Harry and Meghan, are, who have a, a deal with Spotify, have talked about uh, complaining about this whole thing. They had, they're not exactly saying we quit, because <laughs> it's one of their only sources of income, okay? Let's be honest about it. Um, Let's see here. What else? What else? What else? He says, uh, he says, the company does not change our policies based on one creator, nor do we change it based on any media cycle or calls from anyone. While Joe is a, has a massive audience, he also has to abide by these policies. Uh, Rogan has apologized for causing a headache for Spotify, but not for being wrong, and will strive for more balance. By the way, I was watching OAN, you know, the uh, One America News. Uh, and they, you want to hear the piece of information, and, and Charlie, when I talk to you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, okay? But OAN said on the air today that the, um, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, uh, what's the, uh, what's the organization that okays all the drugs and everything like that? Anyway, that they have not told people how many people have died from the vaccine, and they say it's quite innumerable. I haven't heard of anybody dying from the vaccine. Have you? And they said that uh, you know that the powers that be have not uh, announced that or given out that information. Well, maybe they didn't give out that information because there isn't any information. But Charlie, if you know, see if you can find out how many people have died because of the. Uh, vaccination. I'll tell you though, there was a movie years ago called Dr. Ehrlich's Magic Bullet, and it was with Edward G. Robinson. It was about the guy who invented the cure for syphilis, and he was put on trial for murder because several people who took his cure died. And the, one of the last lines in the movie is he's on the stand and he says, but nobody's talking about the other death because they named, listed a bunch of deaths of people who died from Dr. Ehrlich's Magic Bullet. He said, Nobody's talking about the death of syphilis itself. He said, how many more people would have died had we not had this? And the fact is that if some people do die from the vaccine, and I've not heard of this happening, but if some people have, then it's a small price to pay for all the lives that have been saved. You have to weigh one against the other, but I have not heard anything to this extent uh, and uh, 
so, uh, I, but I found that disgusting. And yet, that's on my local, uh, that's, they're on my local cable system, uh, which is uh, Verizon, right? Fios. Uh, and it makes me a little mad, a little mad. Okay, I finally got uh, something else for you here, and then we'll, we'll get to our callers, okay? Um, uh, 17 musical luminaries are nominees for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now, these are nominees. These are not the people who are going to go into the Hall of Fame. Now, listen to the nominees, and then I'll tell you what's wrong with this. Carly Simon, her first nomination. Good for you, Carly. Rage Against the Machine, the New York Dolls, Dolly Parton, her first nomination. You mean to tell me the New York Dolls have, have gotten a nomination several times, but Dolly Parton hasn't? Um, uh, Judas Priest, Dionne Warwick, Kate Bush, Devo, Lionel Richie, first nomination. Eminem, first nomination. The MC5, apparently they've had many before this. The Eurythmics, Tribe Called Quest, first nomination. Uh, Fila Kuti, I've never heard of Fila Kuti. Uh, Beck, first nomination. Pat Benatar and Duran Duran, first nomination. Now, what, what is wrong about all of this? What am I about to gripe about? All of these are nominees. See, it says nominees. There we go. Uh, these are all nominees. These are not the people who are going into the Hall of Fame. No, the top five will be announced in May. And what happens is people get to vote. The public gets to vote on this. Now, I find this as disgusting as what happened with me in the Radio Hall of Fame, you know? Just give me the fucking prize or don't give me the fucking prize, all right? Otherwise, leave me the hell alone. Uh, you know, I, I, I think it's terrible to, to have these people engage in a contest, right? And hope that they're gonna win right uh it's disgusting so i don't know so uh uh it's disgusting that uh, that's it you know um uh, i don't like it when we turn art into a contest art isn't a contest and uh i i just think that all these people should just be installed in the uh, hall of fame right now or just list five of them okay but if I had to pick on these people, I don't know which ones I would pick, you know? Uh, New York Dolls would probably be in my list. Uh, but, you know, Dionne Warwick, I mean, it's, it's so difficult. How do, you, how, do you, how do you turn this into a contest between these people? I don't understand it. Well, anyway, I've been talking for a half hour. Okay, I did it. I don't know if I did it as well as I used to do it, but I did it, and I, I certainly uh, am... Uh, uh, happy to continue here with uh, some of our callers, which uh, we don't have very many of them tonight. Maybe I should have just kept talking. Uh, there's uh, there's Charlie Wallace and uh, uh, Trucker Steve is there and uh, me. That's it. Okay. Hello, guys. How are you? Hi. Yeah. Uh, Charlie, did you hear what I said about uh, about OAN and their little statistic? The, yeah, the, CD, the CDC was the group I was trying to yeah. think of. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, they're, they're quoting statistics of, uh, that, that of the, of the uh, 200 million people that have taken a vaccine, that there have been some 6,000 people who died after taking the vaccine. But there's no nuance to that. If somebody got a vaccine shot and was crossing the street and got hit by a truck, technically mm. they died after taking the, the vaccine. Yeah. But the vaccine didn't kill them. Okay. So in other words, they're, they're saying, they're saying here that, that there's no, uh, they're not making a big deal out of, uh, uh, how many people die. They're not made, they're not revealing how many people died as a result of, of the uh, vaccine. But what they're saying is that people have died who were vaccinated. But that doesn't mean they died from the vaccine. Yeah, exactly. They, they didn't die from the vaccine. There, there, there are very few indications, I mean, very few instances of people 
who took the vaccine and immediately got sick and died. Do they have any idea about uh, why that many people who were vaccinated actually died? I would think it would have been less. Didn't no, we, there's, had, there's 6,000 6, people out of, out of 200 million people is not a big number. Uh, no, that's not a big number. I'm not saying that's a big number, but, but haven't we been saying all along that we don't know of a single death of a vaccinated person? Right. There's yeah. nobody that can definitely say that the vaccine no. itself killed John Doe or whoever. No, what I'm saying is we've said all along that nobody who's been vaccinated has died as a result of it, but I guess they have, right? Not as a result of taking the no, vaccine. No, 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 no. I'm saying as a, they take the vaccine, they get sick, they die. Okay. Now, the vaccine had nothing to do with it, but the vaccine didn't protect them. But we're, we've been led to believe that of all the people in the country who have died, none of them have died who were vaccinated. No, that's not true. Oh, Nobody, okay. Nobody's right. ever claimed that. You know, been, the vaccine is only, only uh, 95% efficient. Well, so that I, 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 yeah. I, I've probably been giving out that wrong information, but the reason I do it is, of course, I have a show on Spotify and I'm trying to live up to their, <laughs> their abilities. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, hello, John Larkin. Hi. You know, you know where all those right wingers are getting this data is there. There's some kind of website, um, and I, I read this somewhere where you can report deaths yeah. from vaccines, and it's it's not verified at all. I mean, anybody can anybody can just call in and say, "Hey, my my dad died from from right. the vaccine that he got." You know, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, there's no evidence. You know, it's not scientifically no, no. proven. It's just bullshit. And of course, OAN they'll take that stuff. And I might add, did you hear about the um, the sheriff up in Washington who who said, "Oh, I'm not gonna, I'm quitting because because they're making me get the vaccines." And and he was all over Fox News. He was a celebrity on Fox News back in October. So. Yeah. This last week, he dies from COVID because he didn't get the vaccine. Did you hear Fox say a fucking word? Not a word. Well, I don't know. I don't watch Fox, so I, can, yeah, I don't didn't know why I would have heard. The they turned him into a fucking folk hero back in October. He dies of COVID. Then they don't say a word. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. disgusting. Yeah. He left the family with it, without income, you know, mm-hmm. and they left it to the guys on MSNBC to don't to put it on there to donate to his family you know wow. Is this- yeah. oh yeah yeah they raised hundreds of thousands of dollars on that for him for the guy's family yeah it's it was totally. msnbc i don't know if they ever gave it to him but well, I mean- they're gonna it just yeah i'm sure they will give it to him but i mean it, it should be rupert murdoch that's given the guy a million dollars yeah. his family because it's his it's it's rupert murdoch's channel's fault the guy's dead yeah well, you know, they never they never will allow themselves to be considered complicit in any of that. No, of know. course not. Oh, he he died because he got AIDS, uh, not AIDS, but they got COVID. Yeah. You know, uh, and uh, they they won't they won't say that it was their fault, you know, or they encouraged it, you know, that he did this on his own. He chose to take the risk, you know. But yet they were lauding him. They were lauding him as a as a folk yeah. hero. You know exactly, exactly, and they're all they're all vaccinated. You know, yeah, <laughs> they won't admit it though. Now the big story up in Canada, where uh, 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 trucker Steve is, our former trucker Steve is, uh, is is all the truckers who have been complaining and demonstrating and. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you something. Our news organizations up here in Canada, CTV, CBC, Global are fucking lying because i bet they've been saying like trudeau himself said mm. that these truckers are just a small fringe section of society or whatever and right now um in alberta mm-hmm. they've had the rcmp are starting to escalate the situation mm. okay mm-hmm. they brought in the swat team this afternoon SWAT team wow Trudeau himself is about to invoke the emergency measures act 
Okay. You know what that is? Yeah, I, well, it, it probably that's just, martial law. That's the same as martial law okay, in this yeah. country. Yeah. Okay. All because he's a little fucking pussy. Who, when the truck drivers arrived in Ottawa, what does he do? Oh, I I came in contact with COVID. I got to go isolate for a few days. What a oh. coward! Well. You don't know that he didn't have COVID and yeah. wasn't doing the responsible oh, thing. Really? He's triple va- triple vaxxed three times. Okay. Yeah. but that, that, And he tested negative. Oh, okay. Well, but he still said he isolated. Yeah. Well, that's wrong. Uh, it, it, you're, you're very mad about this because it's something you really have. You have, you have skin in the game, you know? Um, and uh, I think that... Uh, uh, but they say well, I am pissed off because he basically insulted me personally, along with all the other drivers in the country. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, there, there have been reports that drivers have been blocking roads up there. Is that true? They're parking the trucks in the cities. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that that can cause. But a they're problem. not blocking the roads. All you got to do is watch TikTok because the drivers there are live streaming. Yeah. You can see all around, mm-hmm. you know, Trudeau is accusing these guys, these drivers of getting into fights with the locals, mm-hmm. vandalism, mm-hmm. stealing food. Really? Why does a truck driver need to steal food when they already have stuff in the truck, in the fridge, in the truck? I thought, you know, I'm surprised because Trudeau, it was, it was always, we always had an impression in this country, didn't we, guys, that uh, the Trudeau was a pretty decent guy. Yeah. But this doesn't sound like a decent guy now. No, he's not. So what we have and he's here, saying that what, the, what we have that here the is, truck drivers are causing a lot of trouble and stuff. Well, what I'm saying is, is that there's I, a video yeah. that I found on online on TikTok. Mm-hmm. They were singing "We Are the World" this afternoon with the locals in the city, mm-hmm. dancing in the fucking streets. Singing to We Are the World. That's dangerous. <laughs> what, are, what, 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 are the, um, what are the truck drivers protesting anyway? The mandates. They want the, the mandates to end. The, mandates. the vaccine mandates for the drivers and for everybody else. Mandate. What does that mean? Man, you got to get a vaccine shot yeah. to drive a truck? Well, the mandates that you got to get a vaccine, to keep your job, and all, uh, the, all the lockdowns that we've had. Mm-hmm. We just come out on another one. Wow! And just people up here have just had it. Well, has everybody had it, or or basically the truck drivers, or is there also just no well, everybody? Really? People, the the citizens in Ottawa are actually supporting the drivers. Uh, is that a- in fact the most of the country, about eighty percent, in a poll are supporting the drivers. The other 20 or not. Mm-hmm. What percentage of the truck drivers in the in Canada are vaccinated? Uh, 90%. Well, then what are they protesting? It's only 10% that's not vaccinated. They're, they're already all pro- vaccinated. Yeah, but 10%, you got to look at the numbers, the amount of trucks. It's It may not seem like a lot to you, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, but it's a lot of trucks. Yeah. Okay. 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 So there's a lot of people that are a lot of truck drivers that are actually vaccinated and they're they're still protesting, huh? Yeah. Yep. Because yep. even though they're vaccinated, they're sick of the mandates too. Wow. Well, if, if they've got the shot, the mm-hmm. only other mandate would be would be uh, uh, masks, right? Well, they, they want they want everything gone, masks. Social distancing, all of it. Okay, the question is, what is, what is the result of that? Okay, in other words, let's say we do you do away with all those mandates. Do you think that it's going to... Even gonna be- the, our, uh, our lead medical uh, head of the, the Ministry of Health, in, in, even in Ontario, said that lockdown measures are just something that have failed. And we need to go with a different approach, which is basically learning to live with it, like you do with the flu or the common cold 
or anything else. Well, let me say this. In every other, in a lot of other countries, China is one that I know of because I've been there. When people have colds and they go outside or they go to work or they go to a store, they wear a mask, okay, mm -hmm. if they have a cold. Do you think that Canadians are that responsible that they would take that approach that if they didn't feel well but they had to go to the store? Well, some of them might want continue wearing them, but No, that's not what I'm saying. Won't. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that if we were to do this the right way, we would expect that anybody who feels they aren't well and they have to go out and they have to go to a store or do something like that or get on a bus or whatever, mm -hmm. okay, uh, would then don a mask and they could be counted on to do such. In other countries, they do as a matter of, 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 of the way you do things. You know, it's considered good, uh, uh, what can we call it, good, uh, good form uh, to wear a mask if you've got a cold. Here, we don't wear masks when we get colds. And we should. In fact, I haven't had a cold in the last two years. And you know why? Because I've been wearing a mask. That's the side benefit of this whole thing. You see, I mean, I, um, you know, I sympathize with the people who feel their livelihoods are being impinged upon because of this. And that there have to be certain accommodations to help get them back to making a living. But I still think that the overall health, you know, we, we don't know what is right or wrong to tell you the damn truth. But we do know an old maxim that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And what this is is that ounce of prevention. That's all, you know. Uh, I, and, I'm not, and I'm saying that the, the, the truck drivers, if they're, if they're vaccinated and uh, they're in their cab all the time and they don't get out of it, uh, don't have to wear masks. Okay. And I was going to say, when a truck drive a job, really, you're pretty much isolated other than when you're going to make your stop. Yeah, no? but when you get out, you probably should put on a mask, if nothing yeah. more to protect yourself. It isn't like you're going into like a warehouse every day or a department store or a yeah. place of work where you're around other workers. You but, really don't have anything to worry about. But how, how, how tough are these laws up there about mandates? I mean, in other words, what are they saying? Basically, what 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 are the the parameters of the mandate? Masks, vaccinations. What's the? Well, they want people to get their booster shots. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be surprised if Trudeau's getting kickbacks from Pfizer because he he ordered was it four times the amount of the population in Canada. Well, that would be almost right. That would be almost right because with a booster, you'd be three times the population. Well, he, he uh, I don't remember the exact number, but it's a lot more than the population. Yeah, well, it would have like, to be. It's yeah. overkill. Well, it's not overkill if it's, if it's double the population. That's two shots for everybody. And if it's three times the population, that's three shots for everybody. So it's not that's not overkill. If he went past that, yes, that would be overkill. You know, I mean, I'm you know I'm not beginning to even begin to tell you what I really think about all of this because it doesn't matter. I live in the United States. I have my own set of problems, and you've got yours up there. Well, and the thing is, it's pretty sad that you have to go to TikTok to get accurate news. What you, when the drivers are actually telling you what's actually going on and the news is telling you something different. Well, I'll tell you something about, about this situation. And they're blatantly lying. What, I, what, surpri tell. what surprises me is that the, the Canadians have always been portrayed as being complacent and very quiet and soft-spoken. Well, think about it. And it, it's... It, it's Truck this drivers is, are not the, the, the usual, uh, the most um, socially... Uh, responsible people like yeah, protesting and stuff. Yeah. yeah, and it gets to the point where they protest. You know, there's a problem. Yeah. Well, I, when when people in Canada are yelling and screaming, that's not something you normally are used to hearing as the Canadian zeitgeist, as I put it. You know, I mean, the Canadians are uh, are supposedly very polite. You know, sorry, 
I'm very friendly. sorry, you know, friendly. You know what? And and yeah. they're being peaceful. They don't want it. They don't want like Trudeau has been putting thugs into the into the protest. Like they had uh, somebody taken with a a picture taken with a a Nazi flag and a General Lee Confederate flag. Mm -hmm. Um, Those were fake photos. Nobody, there was nobody with a, with a Nazi flag. And if there was, they public, the drivers publicly shamed them because they know they don't want to do anything stupid. That's going to take the public's favor away from them. A Nazi flag, um, uh, might show up in Canada, but the Confederate flag certainly wouldn't. I mean, yeah, what does you know. have to do with Canada? And they were spotted up there. But they were... The guys who were carrying the stuff were wearing full uh, covering masks. Like, a, what do you call it, a back lever? We don't even know yeah. if the, these people were... But you ca- couldn't see any there of their face. I am sure that in your ranks... There have yeah. been some people coming in from the United States to make trouble. Okay. Well, it, not just just people here in Canada too. Mm-hmm. It just he they they would just fucking hire somebody and plant them into the protest to try and cause trouble, to try and get the the, the police to escalate the situation. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's it's bad. By the way, anybody else want to call this program tonight? Love to hear from you. Hello, Tony. How you doing? Hi. You know, I was going to tell you, I was going to ask you, I buy comic books from uh, from somebody up in Canada, Manitoba, and I could be wrong. I remember I, wasn't the borders for Canada closed for the last year that nobody, came, they weren't letting nobody in? That they were taking it really seriously, I thought. Is that true? Oh, yeah, it was closed to uh, unessential travel. So it was open for truck drivers, basically. Yeah, I was going to say you, nobody else can get into so, that country, though. From the they outside. just recently opened the borders. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. How is your infection rate up there? It's not bad. I don't think it's not really that bad. It's it's starting to drop. Like we were in a lockdown, but um, uh, they started just opening up earlier this week. Fifty mm-hmm. percent capacity. Let's see here, Canadian. Canadian infection rate. I wonder, uh, did, did people protest and have such a big stink when uh, when everybody was getting the polio vaccine? No. Nope. I would have they were dancing in the street for that. Yeah, I know. They were lining up for it. No question is that. Yeah, we, we couldn't wait to get the vaccine. I can't remember. That was before I was born, I think, wasn't it? What? what? When was that? What year? I, it was like 1958, 55, 57, something like that. Well, that's when, when I was born. I, I watched the old documentaries on that, that stuff, and it's like you were born. I, I guess I don't remember ever getting one. January January sixth, you hit a high in Canada of uh, a seven day average of thirty nine thousand nine hundred and five per day, but then it went down uh, at February second to a seven-day average of 16,453. So that's about half. So you have gone down, you know. Mm -hmm. You have gone down. There's no question about it. Uh, So There's a video on my phone. I don't know if I could play it for you. No, don't play it. Don't play it. No. Yeah, because those things just don't show up well. But uh, what's it a video of? What's it a show? It's just the the one guy who wants... Who says Trudeau is going to um, uh, 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 do the Emergency Measures Act? Mm-hmm. Well, is this one guy saying he's going to? Well, it's it's been. I guess Trudeau said it himself. Well, did he or didn't he? Is the question. You know, um, I wouldn't trust him. And <laughs> well, I mean, that's not enough. All I'm saying is, what you've got to do is separate uh, myth from truth okay and, you, and if you, you know it's rumored that he's he's Fidel Castro's bastard son do you know that okay yeah. now, we're getting, now, we're now, 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 now we're getting into a territory <laughs> yeah, which is, is science fiction he was born in 1970 he was born in 1971 
Okay, mm-hmm. his mom and dad got married, or uh-huh. supposedly real dad, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, who was the former prime minister in the 70s and early 80s. Mm-hmm. Okay, and they got married in 71. Margaret Trudeau was known to be easy with the vagina. Good she easy with the vagina. Half of the Rolling Stones. <laughs> she banged half of the Rolling Stones. Yeah, it could have been Mick Jagger. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and uh, they went on vacation into the Caribbean, and they went. There was an itinerary because they were. He, he was a, I think, a senator or a politician, a lower politician. So they had a list of where they were going for security. Mm-hmm. And then during that honeymoon, Pierre went off and did a business trip somewhere one of the islands. And then Margaret went to an unnamed island that wasn't on the list. And it's people think it's Cuba. Because if you look at Trudeau and pictures of Castro side by side at different ages during their life, there's a resemblance. Well, hold on a second. Justin Trudeau, okay. <laughs> Trudeau, Castro's son. Now, Snopes is supposedly defunct it, well, debunked it. Then if they did But there's only one way that debunk that and that's a DNA test. Uh, uh, debunked. Uh, here it is on uh, well this is Spirit Live, something like that. Spirit Live. Um, debunked uh, last month I stumbled upon an article discussing the theory of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau Trudeau, Trudeau uh, Justin Trudeau uh, is the legit illegitimate son of Fidel Castro? Uh, well, this article is, has a tendency. Is Phil back on the show? Hmm? Spreading these weird rumors, Phil? Is he? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's the I ghost. Think it'll, it's the ghost of Phil deciphering himself through Steve, uh, yeah. Trucker Steve. Uh, um, well, meanwhile, you were saying that the the high uh, for Canada was thirty nine thousand cases a week. That was the high. Well, the high here in the United States was an average of almost 900,000 cases a day. And so Canada must be handling it much better than the U.S. Because there's only about one-tenth the population of the U.S. in Canada. But that's a lot more than one-tenth, a lot. I mean, 39,000 is, is one-thirtieth of 900,000. Mm-hmm. So... Wait a minute, who did we just lose? Did we just lose somebody? No. Jack Bishop came in and then he came out. Who came in? Oh, oh, Bishop came in. And I oh, that's out. what it was, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, hold on a second. Maybe. Here comes Jeff. Okay. Well, yeah. Everybody's getting here late. Why? Uh, well, my excuse is I was out eating sushi. Sushi? You can't, you can't fish. You were so efficient. You were so crazy with that fish. Yeah, um, um, I like fish. All, all I'm you saying, like uh, all I'm saying, Steve, is true, yeah. <laughs> you, you've really got to be, you've got to really seek out the truth and not allow yourself to be subject to every rumor that comes along, because that does nobody any good, including yourself. Uh, I think there's a lot of truth here. I think probably Trudeau has done some wrong moves, where this is. Concerned, I think he could have dealt with the truckers much better than you say he has. Oh, well, he know. hasn't. He's, he's been terrible. Yeah, and he still won't talk to him. Yeah. Well, you see, I mean, that's terrible, and right. and and that's horrible. Because he's a coward. Yeah, but I mean, you know, then throwing in that he's Castro's illegitimate son. I like the Castro. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> you know. That's, that's a little far fetched. And so what if he was Castro's illegitimate son? Are you yeah, really. giving him a bad time because his father was Fidel like Castro? Him. Well, that's where I think he's trying to be this dictator. Yeah. He's just getting it from his real dad. Oh, I see. Okay. Like father, like son. <laughs> Isn't he up for election real soon? He just had one last September. Mm. Oh, he won? I, th- I thought he was up again. Yeah, he won a minority government. Mm-hmm. Which is uh, in under parliamentary terms, you had a majority, which is a certain amount of seats, and yeah. then he won a minority, which is. But, but mm-hmm. he he's coming up for election himself, isn't he? Real soon. Uh, 
No, but from last September, you probably won't have one for another at least two or three years, maybe four years. I thought I read somewhere that he was coming. He, he up don't, we don't have term limits. He uh, can run his forever if, for prime minister if he wanted to. Oh, it's um, the guy from France that's coming up for election that I was thinking. Ma I get those two guys Macron, confused. you mean? Macron, yeah, or whatever yeah. his name is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, hello to Jack Bish. Where'd he go? <laughs> he, he's gone again. <laughs> Yeah, he just disappeared. Oh, well. Hmm. He had trouble last night. You know, he didn't get to do his show because yeah. uh, the ice storms in yeah. uh, in Texas. Yeah, yeah something. He had a terrible connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, he kept going off all the time. Yeah. Worse than worse than other times. Yeah. And then he said he he got put in solar power, and he said his solar power was uh, was flood fluctuating. Because I guess it doesn't work too well with ice. I don't know what the what the deal. <laughs> well, yeah, if they cover up the uh, cells, yeah, you're not going to get. Yeah, but at night you're not going to get any anyway. You're going to be running mm -hmm. on the batteries. Yeah. You know. So, but uh, it uh, it uh, did not work out too well for him last mm -hmm. night. So I don't know. He the rest may, of us had a good time. He may be having the same problem, you know, tonight. Uh, you know, I just. Um, um, I don't know. I just I, I'm just so tired of of just I mean now when this when this uh, em, enmity hits Canada, I mean that's unheard of. Yeah. I mean you guys are the nice sweet guys up there get along with each other and have a good time and everybody's You, you know, know what they, these um trucking protests have been starting to spark all over the world. Australia uh, uh every country in Europe is doing it and it's it's spreading yeah and then the, the american drivers haven't really done anything yet but it's only a matter of time before uh, they well start. actually the american drivers haven't done anything about it because you say what american drivers i mean a lot of guys are quitting being drivers yeah. in this country there's a shortage of there's a shortage of drivers there's a shortage but there's still a big like, huge number what were you saying kevin you're you and, were, uh, you they're were, actually planning to go to dc you were a driver weren't you kevin and oh, and you driver. say that uh that you've actually you could go out and get a job tomorrow more money than you ever made as a truck driver before right yeah yeah absolutely oh. they're uh they've got you know 10 20 50 thousand dollar signing bonus going on right now wow where <clears throat> Oh, here, right here, locally. Uh, wow. Schneider, J.B. Hunt, all those guys are dying for drivers. Wow. I should get a job doing that. Sure, why not? No. I'm sure mm -hmm. there are places you can huh? learn how to be a truck driver pretty fast now, isn't there? Aren't there? Uh, yeah, well... <laughs> It's not that easy, but I mean, I I would yeah. want I I I I wouldn't want to be a truck driver, but that's only I because I wouldn't mind doing it for a year or two just for the experience. Yeah, It'd be kind of fun. I don't know. I don't think I could do it. I don't have the nature to do it. I think you it's a real it's a really time. it's it's a really tough job that you gotta love, you know. And, it's and, not for everybody. No, it's not for everybody. Uh, you probably see. Uh, hmm? I, I was a. Uh, uh, a parts driver for an auto dealership in San Jose for about three years. But then when they found out my driving record, they said, you can't even push the carts in the parking lot anymore. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Here comes I'll keep here, you from here, getting to be a truck driver. Be quiet a second. Well, now my drive, this is 30 years, 40 oh, years ago. Here comes Jack again. Poor Jack. Hey, you you know. Jack, what's the problem tonight, Jack? Jack? I'm not connected what? to audio yet. Yeah, I'm finally here. Jeez. There he is. He, you know, I heard you guys talking about what happened last no, wait, night. No, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, what happened last night with you? Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, we found out what the problem was. What? Uh, you know, <clears throat> we've got solar. Yeah. And we've had uh, some cold, cold weather here. Mm -hmm. And uh, while we have solar, they can draw from our batteries as well as from what we generate during the day. And that's yeah. what happened last night. They were taking uh, a percentage of our power from the folks that have my particular brand of solar and uh, the uh, contract that we have, and we were 
up in our uh, spare. Uh, I'll let there he goes. Everybody yeah. else warm. Yeah. Every other word. Your yeah. your internet's frozen. Yeah. Well, no, it's it's uh, he's it's okay now. Audio. But uh, are you are you in better shape tonight? Seems to be been been good all day. We'll see what happens. So tonight. what are they were stealing power from you basically? Well, well, well basically what it what it was is uh, the contract that we have for our solar, which we share with the power grid. Mm -hmm. allows them to draw a certain percentage of the power in our batteries when mm -hmm. uh, we get to an emergency level. And so last, would, last so, night was an emergency level. That's right. Yeah. And, and to, I don't know how bad it was down there where Charlie is, but uh, we still have snow and ice. Uh, this entire area, which uh, if you include... The suburbs in Dallas and Fort Worth is nine million people, and it is shut down. Ice. Yeah, we're pretty much shut down, Austin too. Cause there's ice everywhere. It's still sleeting. To show you how. Oh, well, we're we're probably going to get some of that tonight if you've got it. To show you how bad it was, Alex. Even the big box stores were closed today. Wow. Hmm. Well, well it's because you guys got that real shitty power system down there don't you you're on your own down there yeah yep <laughs> An another case of uh better living well i saw power. i saw your governor today say you've got the best power system in america and yeah. i want guaranteed whatever <laughs> the grid will stay up whatever he's snorting i want some somebody needs to put a spoke uh, put a big stick in his spokes yeah <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, over well, I say there's a chance you no could power. drive him in front of a bus. Oh, wait a minute. I better not say that. I'll get demonetized. Anyway. Uh, but it was not fun uh, up here in uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It did not get above 27 degrees. Today. Oh, nice. You know what it is right now here? I'm happy to be here in California. It, it's, uh, it's, it's not raining any longer. And it's the temperature is 51 degrees. And let me put it this way, Alex. Fuck you and the horse you just rode in on. And just before we go into news and I go into a coma. You know, you know, there, there's a, there's a difference between Texas and New York. New York has ice all the time. So they have a, a, a people that come and scrape the streets and, mm -hmm. and lay down salt. And Texas is not prepared for that. Oh, well, New York oh. is ready for it. Uh, California, right. for instance, if they get weather like that, doesn't know mm -hmm. how to handle it. It, it doesn't well, have the mountains. They do. They well, get it all in the, time. the mountains. They do, but they don't like. You know, at one point, I saw a time when we got actually snow in San Francisco. Yeah, they just sure. stood there and couldn't do anything. Sixty-four. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was. Was it? I think it was 62, 63 that we had it. Yeah, sixty-four. Yeah. I, think I it remember it was snowing at the beach. Oh, shit. Yeah. Gotta hate when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, here it snows at the beach all the time, you know. Yeah. But uh, uh, you know, as a kid growing up, I never saw snow. I never saw snow till my parents took me to Lake Tahoe, and then I saw yeah, snow. That far? Yeah. Yeah. When I was a kid, my friends were offering me cocaine all the time. <laughs> well, like you, Alex, you know, until we had that storm uh, in the '60s, I had never seen snow. Well, no, I thought you were going to say like you, like like me. You have to put up with uh, uh, Alan as well. But, uh, yes, uh, yes. <laughs> so glad you gave him to me. <laughs> no, he would decide to go over there and pester you. Just you know. Yeah, you know, a little pester here, a little pester there. Pretty soon you got a pester. Between you and I, he has a two and a half hour show. You know, that's right. Yeah. That's right. But but I have Mike Allen all to myself, thanks to you. Yes, I I bef I, I gave him to you as a, yeah. a gesture of good faith and caring. And don't pick on Mike; he's a good guy. Yeah. Somebody uh, shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he's actually all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Jeff is down there. We haven't said a word to Jeff Jeff tonight. Yeah. Jeff, he's in yeah, he, he's in Florida. Right What's the temperature right now in Florida? Nice. Oh, today it was like uh, 80. Oh, shut Ooh. up. 
Shut up. <laughs> Just and he's shut sitting up. right under the air conditioner, too. You know, I haven't right. been out of this house in maybe, I think I went down to the store one day, walked down to the store and back, and that was it in two weeks because it's been so cold. You know, I'm not going to take one of my long walks in this weather. It must be warm in Florida right now. The air conditioner is uh, blowing your hair around, Jeff. Oh, come on. I got to tell you, when I, when I worked, I lived in New York. The best thing was when it snowed and you're a teenager because you take a shovel, you walk over to somebody's house, you take out the snow, and they give you money. <laughs> you know something? That was, there's yeah. no better than wait, when wait, you were like wait, 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 wait. Did, 14. Did you hire the little Mexican guy on the corner for 50 nah. cents? You? No? No. Do it yourself. Yeah. Uh, Jack? Now, I heard a story out of Florida yesterday that uh, it had been so cold in uh, a section of Florida, it got down to like 37 degrees, and that's where they start having problems with the uh, citrus crops. Oh, and yeah, also, they had, yeah, they had to, actually, they showed uh, iguanas and stuff or lizards that's what I, that's where falling, I was falling out of the trees. Yeah, because they freeze, yeah. but they don't die. Yeah. They freeze. Yeah. They're yeah. cold-blooded. Yeah. yeah. But, but, Unlike uh, a, a, huh? a caller that I have that you used to have, Scott Boddicker, who uh, says that he uh, avoids that here in Texas because of the bourbon antifreeze he uses. Yes, yeah. exactly. If they're cold-blooded in Florida. I wonder how Trump survives. <laughs> well, he does call my show. He doesn't have any blood. Calls he doesn't on, fall he, out. I guess he doesn't climb in trees. He calls the Monday yeah. show. We could yeah. wish. Well, last night it was so bad as far as getting stuff to work here in my house. I challenged all of my uh, citizen panel members, somebody take over doing this show so I can go to bed now since I can't be heard by anybody. Yeah. And not a one of them would step up and do the... Okay. I couldn't understand what you were saying. Yeah, right? yeah nobody like, had any idea what word. you were saying. Well, I said for you guys to take over. But we didn't hear that. Couldn't understand a word that Amy was saying, but that's the usual. Well, that's normal. That's normal. Yeah. Yeah. And Mike mumbles a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, we every other, you know, about every fourth word we'd hear out of your mouth, Jack. Oh, good. That's about, you know, that, that's good enough for government. Well, normally, normally on a good night, it's every third word, and that's okay. Yeah. You guys that don't go to the intersection, you guys ought to come over. No, it's but he usually place. has a pretty good signal all the way around. And then last night, I mean, come on, you know, weather is everything. I mean, well, I did learn one thing also about the uh, neighborhood, mm -hmm. which may have played in, in this thing. Half of this town has underground lines. Mm -hmm. The other half has overhead. Guess who lives in one of the older suburbs that has overhead lines might be named uh, jack you. bishop would it be you yes or whatever name i'm currently using until the police find out about me yeah <laughs> but um uh, it was no fun and and uh it was it was so bad you know we've got how uh, bad was it it was so bad that uh when we woke up this morning at one bishop manor the cats were not just on top of the bed on top of the covers, they were under the electric blankets with us. <laughs> well, it was so cold in Central Park yesterday. How cold was it? How cold was it? <laughs> that I saw a squirrel warming his nuts. Thank you, I'll be here all week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got a program coming up in about uh, 15, 16 minutes. Catch you. God willing. What? Theater. Yeah, if you get on Zoom, it works better. Oh, sorry. Mm. Hey, you make it happen, I'll do it. You do the technical, <laughs> I'll pay for the Zoom. I gotta do hey, I no, 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 you do the technical, I'll pay for the Zoom. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I mean, we could, we, could, we could have you go Zoom. Um, well, let's talk about it uh, next week. Yeah. I, That's a good idea. Yeah. I, but I, I, you know, I just find that Skype may be as easier for your audience because you don't, you can just give out GabNet Live. Oh, there he goes. Well, there's only five or six of us ever on this show, so. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, it, 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 since he does audio only, uh, he doesn't really need Skype. I mean, he really doesn't need yeah. Zoom. Uh, if he did video, I would say yes. Yeah. Uh, in fact, if he has a Facebook page, he can very easily do video mm -hmm. uh, by um, just like what I do on Mondays is on, on Zoom, I click a thing that says post to Facebook. And then it just posts it for Facebook without any real problem. You know, Speaking so. of Facebook. Yes. What about anybody? Anybody watch the stock market today? Oh man, are they Facebook. Facebook went from four hundred dollars a share to three hundred dollars a share. Yeah, pretty close. Was it? Was it that? Was it that? Loss. Was it that good? I thought it was worse. Eighty-seven dollar loss for the day. Wow. Yesterday was pretty and bad. A quarter too. of their value. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, the the analysts are now saying that it's worth two hundred and fifty a share, not three hundred and fifty a share. So. That's like a hundred billion dollar loss in capital. Well, yeah, well, you know, they, they they were saying on the on the on the news on the business news that uh, what Facebook lost in one day in the stock market, some some medium sized companies that's their whole they would have been out of business, that's their whole uh, yeah you know budget yeah for sure they lost billions. How much money did Zuckerberg lose today? Oh, he lost about thirty billion, I think. Almost. Oh yeah, I think so. I think. Yeah, right. In the billions, definitely. About and by the way, Spotify, on paper, though. Uh, Spotify posted profits, really good profits, it? and still oh, wow. is down 12%, I think. Yeah. There's a big because, backlash, like you said, Alex. Because of the Rogan thing. Yeah. 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 So it yeah. proves that, that, you know, you're not, just because you have good numbers doesn't mean you're going to have good, a good stock number. You know, well, if, I mean, if the right. public doesn't be, like you, they're not going to buy your stock. Yeah. It, it's buy on the rumor, sell on the news, you know? Yeah, yeah. So you know what I was going to ask you, Alex? Do you think if he gets, a, if their stock keeps tanking, I told my brother this, I wouldn't be surprised if they drop, drop Joe Rogan. I mean, he's not big enough to... Oh, oh he's big. He's two million, I mean, two million. Uh, two, you think they'll cut him loose? Two million. They already paid him all that money. Why would they cut him loose? Two million listeners a day. Yeah. If, if you believe what they say. I, I, I listened to him a couple days ago. I think he's fucking boring. It's not even interesting. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. I why don't like his fucking... comedy. He was a horrible comic. I never even saw his comedy. Oh, I just knew he was an extreme fighter. I never knew really he was in comedy. Well, yeah. you know, I've, we've had a lot of people who are, are really mediocre comics do podcasts and make a fortune off of them and get a whole career based upon that. Mark Maron is a good example of that. Well, I like him, Alex. He had Tony Kushner on this week. He has good guests, that guy, that's most of the time. I, I didn't even like, know he was a comic. Mark Alex Maron. looking at yeah. like the guy's dead. I, I, David Feldman's got a podcast. Yes, one of the one of the biggest assholes that I've ever known is Mark Maron. Oh, so really? so bad a human being that Sam Kinison pissed in his bed. <laughs> <laughs> Mar uh, uh, Kinison hated him. Just he hated sounds him. neurotic on the show. When every time you hear him, he sounds like he's like a very neurotic person. Like I don't, I don't know. If it's an I haven't seen not. Mark in years. And if I don't see him for the rest of my life, I'll be happy. Okay. Yeah. A uh, lot of love there. A lot of yeah. love. A lot of love. Yeah. I, just, I just like Tony Kushner on it. <laughs> so could Tony Kushner was on there. Of course well, like he's going to. He gave a good interview. I of like course he's going to be on there. He's plugging a goddamn movie. Yeah. I, I. Yeah. He gave a good interview. That's that was basically. I was listening to him for. I thought he was good. Yeah. Didn't he, uh -huh. he didn't he have Obama on his show one time. Yeah. I think so. He interviewed him in his garage or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, Letter Letterman was on uh, Seth Seth Meyers. Last yeah, I hear night. that was a very good show. Yeah, it was. It was interesting. S somebody it said it was a good show. I saw it. He yep. said it was very good television. Is what yeah. somebody wrote. Yeah, Letterman Letterman knows what he's doing. I gotta say, he's got to shave that beard though. <laughs> I like the beard. Never happened. Beard. Yeah. Never happened. Never happened. You know why he grew that beard? Why? To piss his wife and kid off. It looks funny. That's what I hear. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. He looks like for him. He, he looks stuff. like no. He looks like sometimes. Well, uh, Shecky was talking about it. They went. He went. Shecky went to a funeral of one of the Late Show people. 
okay? <coughs> and he walks up and he, he sees a guy standing on the corner and it's this, what he believed was an absolute disheveled bum. <laughs> really? And he gets closer and it's Dave. <laughs> you know? I mean, Dave, uh, Dave looks, uh, uh, Dave, that beard is, is a little I like that he dresses like that. I mean, well, look, look, at, look at Kevin. Look at Kevin. He's got a, he a looks, long He's beard. got it. I, don't, I think but he's, I like it. It doesn't care. But it's a better beard like, than Dave's got. Dave's got I like a, Dave. Oh, it's got an itch. What do you think? Does that itch, Kevin? <laughs> uh, the beard? Does the beard itch at all or no? No, it gets, the longer it gets, the softer it gets. Is that yeah. what it is? Because I, I itch now like this. I mean, I can the imagine begins, when you... That's where, that's where everybody gets irritated, right about there, and they shave it off, but it's fine. Oh, so them. you're saying your face is hurting you? Well, it's hurting me, too. Thank you. I'll be here <laughs> all <laughs> week. <laughs> I get itchy. Nothing like the old ones, right? Um, but you're, yeah, no, I, I, this thing as it gets longer, it gets, I, I can't get it to really get really long because Marjorie. Did your hearing come back? What? Did your hearing in your ear come yes, back? Yes, it did. Yeah. Oh. I don't know what that was about. Oh, boy. It was like yeah, some. One, one day COVID. One day t COVID? No, you don't yeah, lose don't your know. hearing because of COVID, right? I don't think so. How's your health doing, Trucker Steve? You go okay? Yeah. Because I'm always thinking about you and hoping you're, you know. I had a, uh, a echocardiogram yesterday. Yeah. Um, had dialysis today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I got an ultrasound in April. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, oh. after that, I guess I'll be on the list. I don't know. Yeah, I uh, the echocardiogram. I get one of those about every two years, and yeah. they're, they're very simple. It's a sauna, it's a sonogram, but uh, of the heart, you know. And, yeah, and they want those. they want me to go for a a oral glucose uh, test, mm -hmm. uh, tolerance test or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, this might see what my glucose is like. I don't feel diabetic. Don't. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're probably just checking everything, yeah. crossing the T's, dotting the I's, making sure you're in good health other than the kidney situation. You know? Yeah. So the way you like Trudeau, if his kidney came available, would you take it? <laughs> <laughs> Pot I have to think long and hard about that. <laughs> good, good answer. Good, Good question. Uh, you gotta take it. You gotta take it. <laughs> well, he, like I, I, like I said, he was born Christmas Day, and <laughs> nine months earlier they were in the Caribbean. All right, come on. Joe's <laughs> uh, probably eating this whole story up. He's listening. It maybe yeah, it was like wait Cuba. a minute. Maybe maybe it was a very. There's a photo of her with yeah. Fidel Castro yeah. Yeah, when they went to visit him. The yeah. first time when yeah. they first met, she's looking very lovingly into his eyes. Well, that's the way first you interpret it. I mean, the fact Better is, it could have been stuff. that he got, she got pregnant in the Caribbean because well, was, he was known to be a, a little bit of a horn dog himself. You talking about Trump now? Castro? Castro. Oh, all Does I'm all like I'm saying is, is, you're saying you're saying he got uh, he was born nine months after they were in Cuba. Could be a Caribbean vacation like that is very romantic. Very romantic, yeah. true, you know. And yes, the true, but a, a Trudeau, uh, you but at, Trudeau. Just, yeah, this Trudeau like really like like Trudeau. That. I mean, we know Margaret was kind of, you know. <laughs> she used to dance at uh, Studio Fifty Four all the time. Yeah, yeah. Who's this? Did she well, and, her, did she and her husband really? Did saw she? Halle Berry, did she and, and Pierre get the, my when, tongue was oh, hard. Did she and Pierre get divorced? I'm trying to remember. I believe so. I mm -hmm. don't think uh, Pierre died uh, oh. quite a few years ago. Could have been he died. Uh, yeah. Is Alex, she, did you ever get into Studio Fifty Four? Then you went. To, you went into the club. I was asked to, but I never went because I didn't want to. I always wonder what it how yeah. Too many people from Queens there. Yeah, I, I didn't want to go there. What it was like a... disco wasn't cool. Disco, the, was, disco not cool. was not cool. I, I like the Bee Gees though. I don't know. 
In the 70s, <laughs> disco was not true. Come on, you have to admit, Alex, that documentary, they were good when you made me watch The documentary was singing. good, but, the, but yeah. the music sucked. Oh, I thought they were good. No, now, I now, you don't think it's a little catchy now? The music was always changing depending upon the times. They were musical horrors. Mm -hmm. Kind of like rap without dancing. Yeah. Yeah, well, what I hated most about disco were the fashions. Because when that was mm -hmm. happening, I swore to myself, I will never wear one of those big, thick-heeled shoes, right? Oh, yeah. And yeah. the next thing I knew, I, I, next thing I knew, I was wearing those shoes because it was shoes? the only thing you could buy in a store. Were they comfortable or no? They oh, they were horrible. Oh. They were just horrible. Clunk, clunk, clunk. You could hear him coming from a mile away. He's coming with those big clock offers. <laughs> I remember those that were popular. By the way, there's a great school. documentary on uh, Disney Plus, if you get to see it, by the, about the Sherman brothers. Do you know who the Sherman brothers were? Uh, Richard and Robert Sherman. They wrote music for Disney. They wrote Mary, oh, the score for Mary Poppins oh. Oh, as okay. an example. They wrote uh, a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, one song after another, some of Annette's biggest hits and so on and so forth. And... Uh, they were, they're talking about the song, It's a Small World, which they wrote. Mm. <laughs> and they said that they, that they felt that the Sherman brothers wrote it, but they think they stole it from the Chinese who created it as a form of torture. <laughs> 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 I had a friend who said he was on the ride, the small world ride down in Disneyland, or Disney World, and the boat got stuck and didn't move for like two hours. And this thing PTSD. is on a, this thing's on a loop, right? Mm -hmm. So all they heard over and over again was da 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 It's in Disneyland, not Disney World. No, it's in Disney, it's in Disney World. It's in both, yeah, it's in both. In both, okay. Yeah, I think it was, I think. I've been stuck on that boat for about 10 minutes and it feels like Two and a half. Hours. Yeah. <laughs> swear to God, I got stuck in that fucker, and, 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 and I and I swear yeah. I did not stop hearing that thing for the rest yeah. of the well, weekend. Every time you yeah. go uh, go around a corner, uh, there's a different version of the song playing, yeah. like in a different language. Yeah, so you and, were the you were the one. And I knew the... every freaking language. Too. I went one time. There were so, <laughs> so there were so few people on that ride that particular day that when I turned one of those corners, the kids were playing cards. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, hey, that's it. That's our music. Oh, God. It's been a different show today. I did the first half hour all by myself. Yeah. Uh, was that okay? Was it all right? Yeah. Okay. Missed that part. I see. You missed that part because you thought I was going to have music. Or mm -hmm. not music, but uh, an interview. Or music, I don't care. I have anyway, and if you hey, thank call. you, Charlie. I appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Keep getting better, and uh, uh, and uh, we hope all that trucking situation solves itself, and you, you Canadians can get back to being the wonderful, sweet, wonderful people that you always have been. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 hey, thanks to uh, John Larkin for being here. Tony Magno, Alan, thank you for being here. Uh, uh, Jeff, great having you here, and of course. Uh, uh, Kevin, good having you here too. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Let me just uh, uh, get rid of them here for a second. There they go, okay? And uh, thank you for, so much for joining us tonight. We'll be back again tomorrow night, uh, and uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, please get vaccinated. If you've been vaccinated, get the booster. And if you don't do any of that, wear a mask. And if you don't wear a mask, stay the fuck away from me. See you later.